We created some keyframe animation here on our camera. And let's take a look at that again. Maximize that with Alt W. We do have a slow out, slow in on our animation. But especially with that rotation, I think we can clean that up and make that more elegant. It seems like the rotation is happening kind of suddenly there. We can't change that by just moving keyframes around. The way we need to change that is by adjusting the interpolation of the keys. Interpolation is the filling in of data in between known values. In other words, when we assign a keyframe, we create one, we're saying we want the object to be rotated or positioned at this exact value at this exact time. And then the computer is filling in all the in-between values. That's called interpolation. We can control the speed of interpolation, the shape of that interpolation. It's done from a track view called the curve editor. And let's do that. I want to select the camera once again. And then go to the graph editors menu and go to track view curve editor. Or you can actually open the graph editor from the main toolbar because it has its own button. There's the curve editor. Click on that. And what we see here are function curves. And the time is left to right and value is up and down. And we see all the curves for the selected object. If we wanted to see just certain curves, then we could select those curves. We can scroll down here until we find the displayed curves. There's our physical camera. And I think the position curves are looking okay. It's really just the rotation that I'm concerned with. I can go over here and click on rotation and I don't get to see those curves. But if I click on X, Y, or Z rotation, I can actually see that information. The only thing that's actually animated here is the Z rotation, which is the panning. So I'm gonna work on that. This is the beginning of the rotation and that is the end there. I can move the keyframes around if I want to speed up or slow down the animation. I can select that keyframe and the default tool here is move keys. And if I wanted it to start sooner and slow it down, then I could move that earlier in time. Just be aware, however, that by default, you're going to be moving in both time and value. If I click and drag here, I'm able to move it left to right, which is changing the timing. I can move it up and down, which is changing the value. I'm going to undo that with Control Z. If I want to just change the keyframe position in one axis, I can use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control. Hold down the Control key and then drag in a direction, and I've constrained the movement to just one axis. I'm changing the timing. All right, so that's how we can change the speed of the motion overall. But what I really want to do here is actually change the interpolation or the shape of this curve. I want this to be a more gradual slope here so that it kind of slow out or ease out more gradually. To see this better, I can scale the display of the graph here. And down here, we got some controls for that. We have zoom region. That's a helpful one. If I click on that tool, I can drag a box or a selection region around the area I want to take up the entire graph. And when I release the mouse, now I've got a taller graph. And of course I can make the graph editor larger, maybe maximize it. And now I can really see what I'm doing. If I want this to be a slower, more gradual transition, then I can edit the shape of this curve because the slope indicates the rate of change. In this area here, the slope is steep meaning that in a given period of time, the value is changing a lot. In these areas here, in a given period of time, the value is not changing very much. And then actually before this, it's flat, meaning that there's no change in value at all. Okay, so to change the shape of the curve, we can use the Bezier tangent handles here. I'll go back to the move keys tool and then just click and drag on one of these handles. And now I'm able to control that shape. I am able to freely move it up and down and side to side, just like before. And we don't want to, for example, cause this. We don't want it to rotate left and then rotate right. Just to make sure I don't get that weird overshooting effect, I'm gonna undo with Control Z. And again, use the Control key and then click and drag. And this way I'm maintaining a flat tangent handle 
and I won't get that weird overshooting effect in which the camera would actually move in the opposite direction first. Okay, now this is a very sensitive operation. Small changes here are going to make a large change in your actual animation because camera animation is super, super sensitive. So you'll wanna experiment with this. I've tried to flatten this out to make it more gradual, but I will need to check the results before I sign off on that. It actually looks good. I don't think I have a problem here. It seems pretty gradual. We could actually just go back in there and show you what it would look like if we had just a very linear transition. I can, in fact, select that keyframe or maybe even select both of the keyframes. And up here we have some options for how we want the interpolation to take place. The default is auto tangents. Let's try just straight up linear tangents. When I click on linear, now we just have a straight line interpolation between those two keys. And that's not gonna look good on the screen because we're gonna have very sudden transitions of rotation. Let's take a look. You can see how kind of mechanical and artificial that looks. Okay, so linear animation may be useful in some cases, but for camera animation, it's usually not a good idea. I'm gonna take this back, switch it over to auto tangents, hold down control, and just bring this back out the way I had it, and then check my work. All right, great. So that's how we can use the curve editor to fine tune animation.